being attached to my attachments. Attachments, by the nature of the word, means that something that I am attached to, I am connected to. It is like a, like a nut or a bolt. They are connected to each other. They are right next to each other. And something that we are attached to, we tend to guard, protect, defend. Even if something that we are attached to is harmful for us, not beneficial for us, lossy. Now you may say, why would anybody be attached to something which is not beneficial? You'd be surprised. We all have something. For example, a love relationship that never fruitioned, that never came to a conclusion, or that was not favorable. But one could be still attached to the idea of being attached to that person. The relationship did not exist. It does not exist. But the desire of that relationship does exist. So I could be attached to a person. The other person has no attachment, and there is no relationship. And let's say the time passes, year, decade, and so forth. And I may still be attached to the idea of that relationship. You see, I still may be attached to my attachment. It's one thing to say, I, I love this person. I'm attracted to this person. Forget love for a second. Let's start with, I like this person. I'm attracted to this person. Now that is my attachment with that person. Now let's take this example further that the other person doesn't respond in a positive way to the relationship of likability, lovability. And I feel sad. Oh, I like this person. The other person doesn't like me. Very typical with teenagers or young people. The life may go on, but in your heart, you may constantly think about that person. Oh, I feel sorry for myself because I am so unlucky. Why does he or she not like me? What is it that I can do to make her like me? And do all kinds of things. Go to places, go to mosques and churches and temples and talk with people so that that person may like me or love me the same way that I like or love that person. So then over time, that relationship actually does not exist. It was just an idea. It was just my attachment. And then I can become attached to my attachment. It's very hard to get out of now this double whammy. When we are attached to something, we tend to safeguard it. It is the image is like keeping it in keeping something in a locked box or a safe deposit. Some people may have their diary, may have some love letters, and they would keep it away. They would protect it under lock and key in a box that is locked so that no one can open it. So that is what we can call it an image of attachment. Visual. Being attached to an attachment would be you take that box that is locked and you put it in another bigger box that is also locked. And the key to the inner box is different from the key to the lock of the outer box. You cannot open the inner box without opening the outer box. And you cannot open the outer box with the key of the inner box. It gets tangled up. It becomes a mishmash web that is hard to crack. <laughs> How do you even see your attachments as attachments? As something that you need to detach from? The word attachment means you're something very close, very close. It's like so close that you're not even leaving a gap in between, like attached to the hip. And awareness is something perhaps opposite of that. And as you distance yourself, even visually, you gain awareness. When we distance ourselves from our thoughts, from our body, from our feelings, 
so that we can see things as an observer. That is one way to deal with, to understand, or to see our attachments. How can we see our attachments? To see our attachments, we need the tool of self-awareness, where instead of being a doer, as someone who is going through this painful situation, we take a stance of an observer, just like a camera zooms out. Attachment is zooming in, up close, and detachment is zooming out. So I can hear everything around me, I can see everything around me, I can observe what is going on in terms of interplay between me and who or what I am attached to. And then I can further zoom out of that situation and observe series of patterns related to that attachment. That how being attached to that idea of attachment has guided my decisions, my life. Sometimes people are so attached to their idea that they want their idea only. They don't want somebody else's idea. Even if their idea will result in a loss and someone else's idea is beneficial. You can get so attached to your own ideas, to your own attachments. And just think about it. Imagine if the original idea was to make profit, but, the, but one can get so attached to your own idea of making profit that you can become blind to other possibilities. That even if my own idea results in a loss, I much rather have my own idea implemented than someone else's idea, which will result in net gain or profit. People can tell that person no matter what, but that person will not listen or understand. Oh, don't run after this person. Let's say, for example, in a relationship, that person is not for you. That person is not good for you. You're not going to have a fruitful relationship. That person is so attached to their own idea of, let's say, in this case, the attachment would be of love, of intimacy, of a relationship, that they can't see other possibilities that may result in much, much, much more fruitful relationship that you will get so much more. <laughs> It's not even percentage more. It is like how many times more? How many tens of times more? Hundreds of times? In some cases, millions of times more of what you originally imagined you would get from your initial attachment to the relationship. And the same thing in the other example, being attached to my own idea of financial gain. And if I can let go of that and allow other possibilities, Again, millions of times of gain. So what is a solution here? The solution is detachment. And how do we gain detachment in this situation? The universal solution to detachment in Phyllis Crystal Method is doing figure eight. I'm not going to go over that here. Doing figure eight with a person who you want to detach from. And in some cases, when some abstract thing is controlling you and you find a symbol representing that abstract thing, the effect of something and so forth, the symbol representing that abstract form, doing figure eight with it and cut ties with it. That is the most universal way of dealing with detachment. What else? Surrendering. Surrendering your attachments. Now, to surrender your attachments, you need to become aware of your attachments. How do you become aware of your attachments? This is where a good friend comes into picture. A good friend who is willing to tell you things as they are, without judging. And if you can listen to that friend, if you can even recognize that friend. Oftentimes, people just want to hear what they want to hear. Confirmation bias. I already know what I know. And what I know is right. <laughs> You've already made that decision. <laughs> One of the biggest blessings to have in life is to have an honest friend. 
An even bigger blessing is for you to listen to that honest friend. We need our own blessings. You can have all the mentors in the world, but if I don't have my own blessing of listening to them, no Bhagavad Gita, Quran, Bible is going to save you. Shri Krishna was there for Arjun. Shri Krishna was there for Duryodhan. <laughs> I'm the one who has to decide, am I willing to listen to Shri Krishna? Or am I so attached, like Duryodhan was so attached to his idea, in this case, idea of hate towards Pandavas, the idea of being attached to the war, the idea of how the war should be won and what is it that I need to acquire if I have that and so forth. Another practice is being an observer, also covered elsewhere, where you become aware of yourself. You just sit with yourself and just, you don't do anything. You just watch. <laughs> you watch as an observer everything, starting with your breath, your body, your thoughts, your feelings. And you don't judge anything. You don't say, I want this, I don't want. You embrace everything that comes. I'm just an observer. Being an observer is a tool, but it is the awareness that is the opposite of attachment. And no one can give it to you guys. This is one work that you have to do yourself. If there is a single most important universal sadhana that is applicable to all humanity, whether you believe in any spiritual practice or religion or not, do any meditative practice or not, is detachment. However you do it, to be able to detach from things that you're attached to, that is why we can become very frustrated with trying to detach, not realizing that I have already become attached to my attachments. So you have to open up the outer box first. Only then you can have access to the inner box. And then you open the inner box. I am the one who has created the tangle. I am the one who has to untangle it. So God help me. This work of untanglement, detachment, self-awareness, being an observer, and ultimately being a witness is the ultimate I love me. Hug yourself and say, I love me. I love me so much. I'm so happy. I have this opportunity to be me so I can untangle what is tangled. This lifetime has been given to me as an opportunity to be on the apex or the mountain top of my existence, of my life. And that mountain top is the present moment awareness. And I have this beautiful view, expansive view of all my entanglements and have a chance to untangle them or have a chance to come down from that mountain top. And it can take place only through present moment awareness. Being in the present moment itself is a form of detachment. So if and when, it's not if. When I'm being in the present moment, fully here and now, no attachments can affect me. <laughs> None. And that is why, in some way, being in the present moment is the only sadhana one may need, because then the past and the future just doesn't affect. And being in the present moment is the only place where and when you connect with your higher consciousness. So another secret, another tool to detach is to be attached to your high C. Be attached to your God. Because we do want to now attach to somebody because we are so used to being attached to our attachments, right? So what do we do? We have this habit of being attached to something or someone. Be attached to God. The attachment to God is the most beneficial and the least harmful. I love God. I love me.